Well, let's take a look at this U.S. Space Command. What is it? It's the command that has been put in charge of controlling space, and it has just recently been merged with the old Strategic Air Command. So now that the, the space guys, if you will, and the old bomber guys and the missile guys are all part of the same command. And the Space Command put out a planning document a few years ago called Vision for 2020. And on the cover of it, you see a satellite hitting targets on the Earth below. Let's take a look at some of the language in this so-called vision for 2020. The Space Command says that in the future, because of corporate globalization of the world economy, they expect that there's going to be a widening gap between the haves and the have-nots, between the rich and the poor all over the world. And as a result of that, the Pentagon predicts that there's going to be more and more regional instability around the world because people that are under the boot of these multinational corporations are going to organize. They're going to try to organize unions. They're going to organize to get uh, these corporations from controlling their governments. And the Pentagon says, you know, we can't put a Marine on every single street corner of the world to suppress these populations. But with space technology, in place, we'll be able to see everything, hear everything, and essentially target everything and every place on the Earth. And the Vision 2020 says that space superiority will emerge as an essential element of battlefield success in future warfare. Vision for 2020 also talks about dominating space and controlling space. And they actually define control of space. They say control of space is the ability to assure access to space, freedom of operations within the space medium. And I think, most importantly of all, they say, an ability to deny others the use of space. So here we are, 5% of the world's population. We're going to deny other countries the use of space because we are going to be the masters of space. If you take a look at the Space Command website, and you take a look at the plans they have, it's mind-boggling. I mean, they are trying to put in motion plans which, in effect, could allow some uh, command post in Colorado Springs, you know, in Colorado Mountains, to instantaneously uh, attack any part of the world without warning from space platforms with uh, either nuclear or other high destructive weapons. Uh, and uh, to chance, they think, to cut back on forward basing and uh, simply to hold the whole world in thrall to instant destruction with, you know, uh, Mach 10 um, hypersonic drones uh, giving instant surveillance of whether somebody's crossing a street in you know, some Australia or something like that. Well, we now know that the Persian Gulf War in the early 90s was actually the first space war ever. With U.S. satellite supremacy, we were able to pre-identify all of Saddam Hussein's military targets before the war ever began. And in the first two to three days of that war, we bombed over 90% of Saddam Hussein's targets, intentionally leaving just a tiny sliver of capability in place that we then played cat and mouse with over the remaining weeks of the war where we used 100 cruise missiles at a million dollars apiece, tested out new stealth bombers and new laser weapons. And so coming out of that war, the Space Command said, my God, whoever controls space is going to control the Earth below. Whoever controls the uh, space will win all the wars on the Earth. And so we now know that the Kosovo War, the war with Yugoslavia, was actually the second space war. And the war with Afghanistan was the third space war. And in that war with Afghanistan, the United States introduced a whole new weapon system called the UAV, the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, a pilotless plane that flies over Afghanistan, sending back what is called real-time, split-second time streaming video via satellite back to MacDill Air Force Base in Tampa, where General Tommy Franks was sitting, watching the television screen. Is it Taliban? Is it Al-Qaeda? Is it a wedding? 
And in a moment, he could push the button and the UAV, the unmanned aerial vehicle, which the Pentagon has nicknamed the Predator, could fire in real time, could fire and hit the target on the Earth below. All done in split second by satellite technology. And so the Pentagon calls this increasing the kill chain. And in George Bush's new war with Iraq, the latest space war, the Pentagon has tested out a whole new military doctrine called shock and awe. So today, with the United States controlling space, we are able to uh, absolutely win every war on the Earth below. There is no challenger on this Earth able to stand against us. At the same time, the Bush administration is introducing this program called National Missile Defense. The idea of having a bullet hit a bullet in deep space in order to protect the continental United States from attack by the so-called rogue states. Well, I would submit to you that this idea of national missile defense is really a Trojan horse, that it has nothing to do at all with defense, but in fact it's about controlling space, dominating space, and denying other countries access to space so that the United States can be the master of space and the master of the Earth below, that we can control the battlefields of the Earth. And it's not beyond realization. I mean, the U.S. is, uh, there's nobody else, there's, there's no space race. The U.S. is in it alone. You know? There are no other countries willing to put the uh, uh, huge amount of uh, 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 money into efforts to uh, dominate by extreme violence. Uh, at the cost of lots of local social costs, as you know. The American people are being asked to turn over the national treasury to the Pentagon because so-called missile defense will literally cost us hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. And how will we pay for this? Through cuts in education, health care, job programs, environmental cleanup, this is the way the Bush administration and their allies, their corporate allies, their aerospace allies, who view space as a new market, this is how they intend to pay for these programs. But besides this idea of national missile defense that they say will protect us from attack by the rogue states and from even China, China who today only has 20 nuclear missiles capable of hitting the United States, Besides national missile defense, though, there's a whole new program underway, and it's called theater missile defense, TMD. And the idea of theater missile defense is you don't wait until the missiles get way up into deep space. You forward deploy your systems and surround this so-called offending rogue state and try to hit their missiles immediately after they're launched in what's known as its boost phase. And so today, the United States is moving to deploy theater missile defense in the Middle East and in the Asian Pacific region. We're going to put theater missile defense on Navy ships, Aegis destroyers that are made at Bath Iron Works in the state of Maine. And on these Aegis destroyers, they will be outfitted with interceptor missiles that will be deployed throughout the Asian Pacific region. In addition to the Aegis destroyers, the United States will also deploy theater missile defense on trucks, ground-based launchers, and also on the airborne laser, a converted Boeing 747 with a laser beam on its nose, flying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, over this so-called offending area. Now, when I started thinking about this, China has 20 nuclear missiles capable of hitting the United States. If you've been to Walmart or Kmart anytime recently, you know we're China's very best customer. Is China going to attack its best customer, knowing that we have 7,500 of our own nuclear weapons that we could hit them back with? It just doesn't make sense. But then I found an article in the Washington Post a while back called, For the Pentagon, Asia Moving to the Forefront. And the article says that we are going to manage China. The United States is going to manage China. The article says, that we're going to double our military presence in the Asian Pacific region. In fact, we're now lengthening and widening the runways on Guam and Wake Island in the Pacific to handle the B-2 bombers and also 
We're now pre-positioning cruise missiles on Guam.